What's up dudes? Today we have the Jansno X50 moped style electric mountain bike off-road bike. It's got some pretty unique features. I'll show you here in just a few. It is a full suspension bike. Comes in at a pretty darn reasonable price actually. Disc brakes with 160 millimeter rotors. Right away I can see it has a dual crown fork which is much better for off-roading. Right away we can see the rear shock is a mono shock mounted to a swing arm. You can see the actual controller right here mounted below the seat. 48 volt maximum current is 25 amps. 48 times 25 is 1200 maximum watts which will be sent to this rear hub motor. Talai actually looks pretty fancy really. And the gray paint on this bike actually looks pretty sharp. Oh no. That's not good. 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour, 614 watt hours. Got a little USB charging port, main charging port on the other side, as well as a switch. Ooh, it actually looks pretty nice. Will it be comfortable though? Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Never seen a bike with turn signals like this. Ooh, nice, they give you a pump and a lock. I like it. They even give you a phone holder with this thing. What kind of charge are we gonna get? Two amp. And once again, this place is a wreck. That's better. Looks like a pretty simple assembly process. Just a few things to put on. Here's what we're working with on the dash. We have a ergonomic hand grip on the left. We have a switch for the turn signals as well as the headlight and horn. Pretty basic looking display which we'll check out soon. Handlebars are swept back and also have a good rise to them for comfort. Seven speed shifter, Shimano. Quarter twist throttle on the right grip and ergonomic grip on the right as well. We are working with mechanical disc brakes on this bike. Which I mean given the price, that's probably what I'd expect. We've got seven Shimano gears on the back. The fat tires call for 30 PSI. <laughs> this thing's light front end comes right off. All right, let's take the Jansno X50 out. Up and up on this thing, let's turn on the display. It gives you kilometers per hour. We're gonna have to change that. Full charge, gives you a trip. Voltage, I love to see a voltage on these. Voltage gives you a very good idea what uh, your battery life actually is. 48 volt battery, charge to max is 54. Get a variety of pedal assist, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see if we can get into the menu by holding plus and minus. Sure can. Oh geez, what have I done? Let's get this thing off for a ride. Starting the straw up so we know our exact distance of this ride when we're done. We can see the range. The very first thing we're gonna do on this bike on a full charge, we're gonna do pedal assist five, throttle only. Uh, I weigh 200 pounds. This is a 20% hill climb grade. 20% grade is very steep. So let's just see what it can do under its own throttle. 750 watt motor, 12.8 amp hour battery, full throttle, ready, go. No pedaling. What's the torque like? What's the torque like? Not really too bad at all, honestly. This is, uh, it's doing the hill. This thing weighs like 80 pounds and it can do no rollout. It can climb the hill under its own power, no pedaling. All right, so a block down the road. Let me give you my very first impressions of this bike. Uh, a few things going on here. One, this thing's in kilometers per hour. So I'm gonna try and get that thing switched over. Two, down here where the kickstand is mounted, um, it's causing my foot to hit as I pedal. So yeah, that kickstand is mounted like right next to the pedal there and not a great location. Probably not like a deal breaker. It could be moved potentially. And then, you know, like I said, I'm six foot five. So this bike is gonna be probably, you know, just like a little bit too small for me. How my, my knee kind of comes up really high at the top of the pedal stroke. And uh, since my foot is kind of hitting 
that kickstand back there if I have my foot on the pedal 100% correctly. But I just wanna tell you up front, I'm probably not gonna be pedaling this bike much today. This is a moped style kind of cruiser bike. I think a lot of people are gonna be riding it the way I ride it. If you do pedal more than what I'm gonna to do today, you'll probably get better range than what we observe later in this video. Let's just start this thing out on pedal assist one, start pedaling a little bit. Uh, kicks in right away, I feel the power. Uh, and pedal assist one brings us up to 11 kilometers per hour. Pedal assist three, we are at basically 17 kilometers an hour. Pedal assist four, tops us out to 20 kilometers an hour. And 20 kilometers an hour is showing as 12 miles an hour on my speedometer. And bump it on up some gears here to seven. Pedal assist five brings us up to 24 kilometers an hour, which is 15 miles an hour. So under pedal assist, top gear seven, this thing's kind of like a relatively more chill, uh, slower cruiser. So check it out. I figured out how to unlock the top speed. Under the seat here, you got two little wires, a black and a white wire. According to customer support, all you gotta do is unplug these, and now the top speed should be unlocked. Pedal assist five, let's go. Oh yeah, there we go, oh. All right, it's the next day and I have the speed unlocked. Everything unlocked, let's go ahead and do zero to top speed now. We are on a full charge again, uh, just under 54 volts. Ready, go. Twenty. Keeps on going now. Got a little more speed. Wow, this thing is a, a real e-bike now. So that definitely peps it up a bit. Basically, double your top speed by just unplugging that wire. Obviously, this is going to hurt your range significantly going this fast. A little bit of a downhill. We can actually hit over 29. Real quick, let's try out the, the pedal assist modes. Let's see, pedal assist three. Pedal assist three will now assist you all the way up to like 20. I wonder what happens if you pedal beyond 28. Oh, you, you can't, like you just have to be pedaling way too fast. And like I said, this is the next day. So I'm gonna go ahead and splice back in my footage on the original, on the original out of the box settings for the rest of this review, just know your top speed is higher once you unlock it. See if we can get a little bit of air jumping this little bump. Oh yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so it is full suspension and that actually does make a significant difference on these bikes where your weight is just like really back on that seat. So on the suspension, there are no adjustments whatsoever that I can see. Normally, if there were gonna be adjustments, they'd be up here on top. So it's just kinda, you get what you get and taking it off the road. Yeah, I mean, basic suspension. You, you can definitely tell it's a lot better than if it didn't have suspension. I like that the seat on this bike is like relatively wide. Um, it's got a good amount of firmness to it. It's not like really hard or really soft. Just, I like that it's wide and long. Can you fit two people on this bike? Um, you know, it'd be a squeeze to get two on here but I would say it could certainly be done. You know, I'm sitting all the way at the back and there's still a decent amount of room. So I'm not even sure how I did this, but I got it in the settings and I was just mashing buttons and I got it 10 miles per hour now. Let's try out this horn. It's actually a pretty loud horn. Let's take it down some stairs. Oh. <laughs> a little bit rough. Quick little range update. We are 5.6 miles into this ride. Been out here for about 32 minutes. Battery is showing five bars, but more importantly, it shows 52.5 volts, which according to the actual percentage chart for a 48 volt system, 52.3 is about an 85% charge. Let's see how we can do going through the sand on these shorter fat tires. So, it's doing it. It's not as stable as taller tires, but they're good. Definitely, definitely a fun little bike. 
steering wheel doesn't turn quite as far as I would like. That's just the result of the dual crown fork. 99% of the time is fine. The dual crown fork does make it like more suitable for like off-road riding compared to the non-dual crown forks. So in general, I'd say this bike is just like a nice gentle cruiser. It's something that's nice and fairly stylish and economical, you know, considering the price point of this thing, if you're just like kind of looking for an e-bike to kind of get your foot in the door to e-biking on a moped style electric bike that has a reasonable top speed, this one could be the ticket for you. It's not bad. It's gentle and approachable. Uh, this thing's not going to scare you at the amount of power it gives you, but it also has like nice hill climbing abilities and a decent torque curve. It has a decent power band that pretty much I would say, you know, anybody new to e-biking could probably just hop on this thing and not feel intimidated by it. So I mean like nothing on this bike is like truly excellent, but like everything is like pretty decent. So now that the battery's wore down to about 80%, uh, let's see what we can do with a little bit of a rollout on a longer hill. So full throttle, rolled in at about 10 miles an hour. Losing speed a little bit, nine. Holding about eight, five, eight miles an hour. So it can definitely do hills. The geared hub motor on this bike, 750 watts, has enough torque. Uh, this is the hill we just climbed. You know, fairly steep. So let's talk about the pedal assist lag. I am not pedaling, pedaling. Motor kicks in. Not pedaling, pedaling. Motor on, motor off. Not pedaling, pedaling. Motor on, ramping up, full power. So on the pedal assist, there is like a small lag of about a second. Under throttle only though, uh, you get the power a lot quicker than when you're turning the pedals. Oh, I'm just, I'm doing a review. <laughs> hey, you need to be testing different bikes out, huh? Yeah, I try a lot of bikes. I've seen, I've seen you on Long Beach on the, on the, on the big TikTok you're on there. This is the Jansno X50. Right, generally what we do for a brake test is bring it up to 20. This bike doesn't go quite 20, so I'll just bring it up the top speed of 15. It does have 160 millimeter mechanical disc brakes on an 80 pound bike. Uh, probably a little bit underpowered, but you know, it is a uh, relatively inexpensive bike. Anyway, from 15, we'll pull the brake levers and stop. Back tire locks up, front tire, it's got pretty good bite. Brings the bike to a stop like relatively quickly. I wouldn't say that these brakes are like dangerous or anything, but they are mechanical disc brakes. So you have to pull on those levers uh, pretty decently hard to get them to have full uh, braking force. Pretty much the gold standard is hydraulic disc brakes and 180 millimeter rotors. But even with these mechanical disc brakes, pulling on, a, on the levers as hard as I can, the bike does actually come to a stop relatively quickly. They just don't feel as good as hydraulic disc brakes. All right, let's see what kind of range we got on this today. And I'll leave you with my final thoughts and the pros and cons. So we did 17.2 miles. Um, an hour and 34 minutes of riding time. The display here is showing five out of five bars, which is not accurate. However, the voltage display is showing 48.2 volts. Looking on over here at our chart, 48.2 volts would be about 57% battery on a 48 volt system. So this is gonna be one of those displays you need to get in there and modify the bar settings or just look at the voltage meter. Honestly though, 55 to 60% remaining on the battery after 17 miles, multiply that number out by two, you know, that'd be about 35-ish miles of range. And that's with me weighing 200 pounds and I did not pedal this thing hardly at all today. I just had this twist throttle here pinned wide open going the max speed of 15 miles an hour almost the entire time I was riding this thing. So that really does go to show just how much cruising at slower speeds does for improving your range right there. Unfortunately, I was unable to figure out how to get into the settings here and modify that top speed to make it go faster. I'll splice this into the summary section as well. Uh, you know, 15 miles an hour is more safe than 28, 29 miles an hour. But as soon as you unlock the full speed of this bike, it becomes, you know, a pretty capable, a pretty darn capable moped style electric bike. So, I mean, if you want to keep it limited, you can, but you don't have to. 
Best thing is this thing costs only like just over a thousand bucks and we're about to pass this bike right now that costs literally a guarantee. It's a relatively strong motor and controller setup. The hill climbing on this bike was actually fairly impressive considering the smaller battery pack. So overall, I'd have to say, you know, like considering the price, it's a pretty good bang for the buck. And it does have some unique features like these turn signals, this big beefy cool looking headlight. Overall, the aesthetic of this thing is actually pretty good. It's got the rear tail light and rear turn signal as well. I mean, in general, it's kind of just like a baby super 73 if you like the bike i have a link in the description box if this bike is not for you you can watch this video next thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed the review give me a thumbs up drop a comment catch you next time i should mention the light on this is a brake light